Hey, welcome. I'm glad that you are here with us today. Um, my name is Mark. I'm one of the, on the senior team here at uh, Audacious Church, and I'm really honoured that you would join us today to find out what God is saying to us collectively and you individually. So today, um, in our series, looking at relationships and what all that means, um, I'm just going to pick up on a story from the Bible that I think is absolutely crazy. It is East Enders worthy of its of its madness. P.S. There are other um, there are other soap operas out there. You can watch any of them that you wish. But this one I think is absolutely crazy because relationships are crazy. There's ups, there's downs, there's lefts, there's rights. There's so many connotations. There's mums, there's dads, there's sisters, there's brothers, there's aunties, there's uncles, there's cousins, there's second cousins removed, and there's that family that you know you've been told they're your uncle, but really they're just your family's best mates. So here we go. In in Genesis, in, from chapter 40 onwards, there's a story about Joseph and his brothers. You may or may not know it, but basically, Dad has 12 sons, but he prefers one of them way more than the rest of them. He gave him, Joseph, a special coat of many colours, and it really started ticking off the rest of the brothers. Understandably so, if one person gets something and the others don't. Favoritism never goes well. So there's a whole mishmash of emotions going on here. There's anger, there's shame, there's embarrassment because why wasn't it the older son who got it? There's envy, there's jealousy, all of these kind of things that happen in any relationship. So it's kicking off. And one day the brothers get really ticked off with Joseph, who, who'd unwisely been, you know, there saying he was great, he was brilliant, that the brothers would look to him in the future. They got ticked off and one day they get rid of him. First of all, they plan to kill him and throw him down a well. But then they saw some people who were slave traders and they sold him. Told his dad that he'd been ravished by wolves, all that kind of stuff. And that's it. So you've got a dad who's now upset because his favourite son's gone. He's sad, he's upset. Maybe you've got some guilt going on with some of the brothers. It's just messy. But in truth, do you know what? Relationships can be messy. But God is really intriguing. I believe that relationship is one of his ways of getting us to become the people that we're supposed to become. He's looking for us to become as much like Jesus as we can. And in this, in, there's an unbelievable verse, I think, when you read it in this context, in 1 Thessalonians 5, and it says this, Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. We're going to unpack that a little bit later. But there's a moment later in Joseph's story when the brothers are starving and come to Egypt where Joseph has ended up and is now the prime minister of the country. And he stand, they're standing before him and he has this opportunity to get revenge, to pay back wrong for the wrong that was done to him. Because remember, he's been thrown out of his family. He's been abandoned that's a big deal. He's not seen his dad for 22 years. Loads of stuff going on inside in him. But he chooses, he makes this choice not to repay wrong with wrong. He chooses to repay wrong with good. He feeds them. He gives them stuff. He sends them back, tells them they can come back. And in the end, there's this beautiful moment when the family is, is reconciled. He meets his dad again. And Joseph says this, hey, come close to me. And when they'd done so, he said, I am your brother, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God had sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there's been famine in the land. And for the next five, there would be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. My mind's blowing. The relational tension that there would have been in that room and in all of that experience would have been huge. But you know what? Joseph took on the character of Jesus at that point and was forgiven and did good. And I think that's what we are asked to do in every relationship. Let me boil it down. It might be small. Today, you're in work and a co-worker takes credit for something you did. That hurts, it's not nice. But what the Bible's saying here in 1 Thessalonians 5 is strive to do good for each other. Don't repay that wrong. So let, don't let your flesh 
talk about that guy or girl behind their back. Don't let your flesh try and get them back. Do good to them. Buy them something. Pray for them. Be, do good towards them. That's a little tiny example. It might be you're driving today and you get caught up. Don't let your flesh rule you and be all like, ah, ah. bless the person. Let's do good. But it might be something here that you've got a bigger relational issue with family members or people who've upset you, disappointed you, hurt you, let you down. Maybe you're jealous, maybe you're angry, maybe I don't know where it will be, but right now I pray that the Holy Spirit is, is, is illuminating things to you. And let's see what God's saying. I think God is clearly saying to us from First Thessalonians 5, he's saying, hey, it's possible to forgive. Nobody said it was easy. Nobody said it was going to be simple. Joseph had 22 years to walk through what was going on in his heart. But in First Thessalonians 5, it says, always strive to do what is good for each other and everyone else. It doesn't grade the wrong that's being done to you and it doesn't select the certain people you should do good to. It's always and everyone. It doesn't say it'd be easy either, but it does ask us to do it. So I'm asking you as a church today to forgive. Nobody said it was easy. To get into the presence of God today. Nobody said that would be easy. To break your will, to break yourself and repay any wrongs with good. Nobody said that would be easy. And just, just do good to people. Nobody said that would be easy. But at the end of this story, Israel is completely and utterly saved. There's a people there now for God's glory. And that's what happens when we choose to do these things. Forgive, get in his presence, to kill our will and to do good. God is glorified. There's a different way of living. The world says wrong for wrong, eye for eye. Jesus says do good. Church, we're asking you to do good. I really will pray that today God can break through, can speak to you and can help you to be the witness that he's asking you to be so that he's glorified and we make a difference on this planet. Have a great day. You're amazing. Bye.